This is Laura with Jot and Tittle Vintage Typewriters. We're going to do a tutorial video today on a 70s Coronet Electric 12. These are made by Smith Corona. And this one is electric. You have to pull it in, plug it in, but it has a manual return. And um, so we're going to take a look at all of that today and how to use it. And these are excellent for everyday use. Fantastic typers. Um, if you are even for heavy use, you do a lot of output and you want something that's pretty similar to a computer. This is a really solid typewriter for you. Um, I am going to uh, switch to a, a wider view on this and then we'll get started. Okay, so we're going to just, uh, I am going to assume that if you're watching this, you don't know anything about typewriters and I'm just going to kind of start from the back. We're going to make our way forward and uh, help you uh, use your typewriter. I'm assuming you've got one like this, so grab it and pull it out and watch along with me and uh, uh, we'll get you typing in no time. Okay, so back here is your paper holder and I I really find these helpful because when you don't have it, your paper starts to, when it gets to a certain point, it'll start to like slam against the table and it's kind of like one of those fingernails on chalkboard things that really, I don't like it. So. Um, I personally like using the paper holder. Down here, you're gonna see your margins, and so you do need to manually set your margins. So if you're typing on a postcard, you're gonna want it thin uh, nar or narrow, and uh, if you're doing a full page sheet, then you can pull that out. Nice thing about the 12 inch carriage is that you can put your paper in landscape or portrait. Um, you have room to use larger papers, which makes it ideal for those of you who are crafters because you never know, um, you know, what you're going to come across. And most crafters use just teeny tiny bits of paper, but uh, every once in a while there's like an art piece that crafters want to type on. And if it's a little bit larger art piece, you just have more flexibility. That's the only reason I recommend these for crafters. Um, okay, so I'm going to bring these back in. On either side of the carriage, this whole section here is called a carriage. You'll see these white levers. Now yours may have one or both of those broken off. And if they're both broken off, you'll see just like a little metal nib down there. If you like super glue or duct tape, uh, you know, like a pencil or a, 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 a doyle, a doyle, no. Anyway, like a thin piece of wood on there, um, and just to give you leverage, then that'll work. We've seen uh, plastic spoons, we've seen pen caps, uh, you name it. As long as it has some structure and firmness to it and you can t attach it to that metal nib, it'll give you um, the leverage you need. And so it doesn't matter which side, you just pull that in and it moves your carriage. And you'll hear that bell. Um, you should hear a bell. This one's nice and strong. And that's just to tell you, hey, you're at the end of your margin. It's time for you to hit your return handle. So, um, and your carriage is only going to move as far as you have your margin. So there and there. And if I move these out, uh, my carriage will move further. So that's how that works. And that's why you have a bell. Um, now, when you hit your return handle, it's going to not only take you to the front of the line, but it's going to advance a line. And so you'll see one, two, and three here on your carrot on your top of your carriage, and that is your line selector. So it'll advance one line, two, or three. Now, sometimes if you're when you hit the return handle and it's not advancing the roller, that means it's not catching onto those little teeth that are on the roller. So you need to check 
uh, one of two things. If the handle is loose, you just need to get a screwdriver and, and kind of tighten it down so that it's catching uh, those teeth. Or sometimes those teeth can break off. You'll have to look and see what that issue is. Um, sometimes it's a very easy fix. Okay, on the right side, you have another lever here, and that is your paper release. So I'm going to go ahead and load a piece of paper. And I've used this one, but I'm going to use it again. So you just put your paper right back here, okay, right behind this metal plate and against the ruler, and turn the handle. You don't have to shove it down in there. You just set it there, turn the handle, and bring it up. And in this case, I got it loaded nice and easy even yay but sometimes it's uneven so then that's when this paper release comes in handy you just pull that forward you can adjust your paper okay however you want it and then just make sure you re-engage it and then your paper needs to come underneath this metal bar now if for some reason when you hit the return handle and your paper starts bunching up on one side or another that usually means the roller is is like stuck and so you know just pull it to the side and clean the bar or if it just your roller won't keep turning. I just pull them over to the side like that, okay? So those are just some common things that you might come across with a typewriter. Just kind of giving that to you for free. All right, so um, also on the carriage, on the left side, you'll see a black button. Or it just looks like a black, um, you know, piece of decoration, but it's actually a button. You can push it in. And what that's for is when you turn the handle of your roller, and it's called the platen, it'll click every half of a line. But sometimes if you want it to line up, just kind of in between that. And so this will give you a variable spacing. So you just press in that black button, and then you can turn this and put it, line it up exactly where you want, and then release it, okay? That's what that is for. All right, so now I'm going to move my carriage all the way to the left. And I'm going to open up the top. And the reason I move this to the left is because if you try to open this with the handle too close, it's going to scratch your surface. So that's why some typewriters, a lot of typewriters will have these lines, is because people try to opening the tops with the, with the handle over it. Okay, inside you're gonna see your ribbon. This takes a universal ribbon spool, um, which is a two inch spool with a half inch width. Um, if you have your own spools and you want fresh ribbon, we have an option for you. You can send us your spools and we'll roll it with, for, with ribbon for you. Um, also, you can purchase ribbon on our universal ribbon on our website at jotandtittletypewriters.com. Um, so, and the, the spools and ribbon are pretty easy to find. All right. So when, once you load your ribbon and it's messy, you're going to need, um, gloves or you're just going to need like a wet towel nearby because you're going to get ink everywhere. It's just a messy process. Um, and while I can't get my hands in here to show you how to load it, I will, because you won't be able to see anything, I will tell you that you just need to, it's easy, you just pull this out, okay? The ribbon comes across the top and then around. When you set it in there, just plops down. You just need to make sure your ribbon goes into the guide wire right here, all right? Same thing with this side, there's a guide wire right here. And then I have an up close photo of this area where, <coughs> excuse me, you can kind of uh, see how we've um, got it threaded through there, but you just have to pay attention. In this case, there's uh, a little tiny hairline opening on the top, so you'll be putting the um, ribbon down from the top. Sometimes they come from the bottom, sometimes they come from the back. You just have to look to see where the slits in the metal are around here. Um, but use that photo we have, um, the link goes to the product listing. Even if the product is sold, you can still see the photos. And that photo will just give you an idea of how it's supposed to look when it's threaded properly. Okay, so this is your um, type bars, the escape, escapement type basket, whatever. The whole area is called escapement here, type basket. Um, the motor is on the left side. Sometimes if you have one of these Smith Corona electrics and you turn it on, you'll hear this kind of this grinding 
you know, and usually that's the motor rubbing up against the side of this metal top. And if that's happening to you, super, super simple, but just gently with your hand, like your right hand, just kind of push on it gently, not a lot, just gently um, on this top to kind of get it to move it from rubbing that motor and then close it. Okay, so down here, um, we're gonna take a look at the keyboard. First thing, we're gonna turn it on. It does need to plug, be plugged into a wall outlet. It doesn't take batteries or anything like that. Um, here's your on off switch, you just turn that on. And um, I always like to give it a few seconds, all of my electrics to just get all the motors going there and warmed up. Um, so here you're going to see um, your tab. And um, what that is, and some people use them, some people don't. I don't use tabs. Um, so I don't even know if the tabs on my typewriters work because I never use them. Um, but if you want to use it, you can set your tab with this button, clear it with this button, and advance with this button. So I'll clear it. There you go. Um, and if there's multiple tabs, what you can do is hold down the clear button while releasing the carriage, and that should clear all the tabs. I stopped it with my hand, but let's try that again. Okay. That was the margin that stopped it. And then to set it, you just put your carriage where you want it, hit set, and there you go. So you may ask, why did I put my hand here? Well, when you release a carriage, there's a draw band in there. It has a lot of tension. And so it can cause that carriage, especially when you've cleared your tabs, that carriage has a lot of force going across. And every in a, these are vintage. They're old. As people don't, I think some people forget that. That when we say vintage, it's they really are like sixty years old. And so that carriage can go flying. And I've broken a mug or two, um, or sometimes it just hits it really hard, and it's very jarring. And so I like to just put my hand there to keep it from hitting just really hard. Just my personal choice there um, okay we're going really slow today that's okay I just woke up so your keyboard right here just like a computer keyboard it has a shift just like you do on a computer keyboard so without the shift it's lowercase and numbers with the shift it's uppercase and symbols you can lock your um, caps uppercase um, and then to release it, it doesn't matter which one, just press the shift and that'll release it. You'll see a button, this number one has a different color on it. That means it's interchangeable. So if you were to open this up, the number one key, which this is an electric, so it's not gonna let me pull the key forward, but there's a, there's a tight bar head on there that you can pull off and interchange it with a different symbol. And those are a little bit harder to find. You'd have to look around eBay or, or um, some maybe shops or something, antique shops to find interchangeable heads, but that's what that means. Um, this is your color selector right here. Right now it's on red, black. Now if it's in between, that's, um, that's gonna be a stencil setting and it's not gonna type right. So you're gonna be like, this is not typing. There's something wrong with the ink. No, 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 you're on stencil. If it's in printing at all, the only reason it's in printing is because there's some ink left on the type bars. So you wanna make sure it's on black or red. Now, when you have issues with typing, like in this case, where you're like, it's not typing right. Maybe the ink is out. There's not, it's not, there's something wrong. Check two things before panicking. Um, make sure that your color selector is firmly on the black or the red and then reverse the direction of your ribbon because when you get to the end of that spool, it's not the end of the ink in that ribbon. There is a lot of ink in there and you're gonna go back many, 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 many times before you need to replace that. And so, and if you see people arguing with you that the um, ribbon should reverse automatically, that's not necessarily true. The only reason that some ribbons reverse automatically is because they have little grommets on them, which, catch a little lever in the typewriter and they'll reverse automatically 
but it has to do with the ribbon. And so we don't sell the ribbons with the grommets on them. So our ribbons don't, you have to manually reverse. Um, I get people who argue with me on that all the time. And I don't know what to tell you. If the ribbon doesn't have a grommet, it's not going to auto reverse. So just keep that in mind. And um, there are places to find the ribbons with the grommets. Um, but a lot of the ones that you see for sale do not have them. Okay. And it's usually the old the old ribbons and you there are ways to re-ink old ribbons I don't know how to do that okay Ooh, doing some rabbit trails today okay copy set over here you're never really gonna need it it just determines how hard these t these tight bars are gonna strike your paper so you know you maybe have a really light hand and um, you don't need a setting uh, to be very much and other people may have a really heavy hand like my husband has a very heavy hand and he may need to adjust the setting um, because the typewriter responds to you all right also on electric typewriters you can hold down your space bar and it will uh, power space and then there's three keys with an auto repeat and that's going to be the dash the X and the period and if you just hold them down, they'll auto repeat. You have a backspace. Backspace does not erase. It just backspaces. You don't make, you, you, there's no delete button on your typewriter. And if you make a mistake, which you will, you can X or dash through something and just type the next word next to it. You can erase or there is white out if, but I think it's very messy and it's also really hard on your typewriter because you have to clean it a lot more um, often. You can't just let all of that white um, film from white out to get down into your typewriter. You'll have problems. Margin release. So, um, you know, I told you about the bell. So the margin release, there's your bell. When you hear the bell, you should hit the return handle. But, but sometimes you're in the middle of a word and it'll stop on you. So you hit MR, finish your word, then you can hit your return handle. So that's what that is for. Um, so we've gone over everything on this typewriter. That is really the basics for how to use a machine. I hope you found this helpful. Please give me um, a thumbs up, a follow, get the notifications. We come out with new typewriter listings on our website every Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. You have a blessed day.